Mm -hmm. It'll mean a lot to him to have it driving here, and he really would like to. That was one of the conditions: is that it says, as long as I can drive it, as long as I'm allowed to drive it. I'm sure he can drive it. Absolutely. All right, I'm here with Martin from Electric Dream Machine, and um, Martin's going to tell us about this barn find. Yeah. Well, um, we've got here, it's a, a 1950 Dodge Kingsway. Um, it's been in a shed in storage since the early 80s. Um, and never had a chance to restore it. So we've uh, um, suggested that EDM should uh, do a conversion on it. And my dad, who owns the car, um, said that was a pretty good idea. So yeah, here it is. It's all original, um, it's complete. I've driven it myself back in the 80s, and since then it's just been parked parked in a shed somewhere. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So it's still got the motor and... Yeah, so it's still got the original motor. Um, everything's, everything's as it was in its original condition. Um, nothing's been removed. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's shown its age, but it, there's no... No significant rust in it at all, there's no damage, panel damage. Um, all the interior is complete. It's a bit full of rubbish in there, but it, um, there's bits and pieces, covers, but you can see the stitching is gone. Um, a bit faded where the sun shines on it all the time. But overall, um, yeah, it's completely a really restorable car. Yeah. Look at that. That's just got a really nice dash. Mark and I have been discussing and thinking that it's possibly um, going to adapt well to using the gauges for the electric conversion. And your plan is to keep it as original inside so it doesn't look like an EV conversion? Yeah, so anyone that looks at it is just going to think it's an original Dodge Kingsway. Um, hopefully it'll drive similar. Um, so when you're sitting in the, in the driver's seat, yeah. For all intents and purposes, it's, a, it's an original Dodge. So you want to tell us uh, why your dad thought about converting it to electric? Yeah, so we're, Dad and I have been discussing um, Electric Dream Machine um, as, as our business now. Um, and he's always wanted to have a car to drive every day. And so he's actually just gone out and bought himself a 19... 49 Chev Ute. And having a chat the other day, he just came out of the blue and says, Oh, I hadn't thought of it before, but that Dodge would be great electric. Um, and so he had a big smile on his face and he said, oh, Yeah, if you want to do it, you can do it. So we um, talked talk to the rest of the company and everyone seemed to think it was a pretty good idea. So yeah, here we are. Wow. So what sort of. He's going to drive it around. What's he want it for That's driving around town or oh, he's yeah. everyday driver? Yeah, yeah. That's great. So I'm sure we'll, we'll see some footage of that pretty soon. Um, so yeah, but he wants to be involved in this conversion as well because he did his apprenticeship on this on these sort of vehicles. Okay. Um, back in the late 50s, he did his apprenticeship in Geelong at Belvis Motors yep. and at his brother's workshops. Um, so he's very familiar with these vehicles and so they, they mean a lot to him. Um, that era of car because they were common, they were everywhere. There was wow. these Dodges and Chevs and DeSotos, um, all those vehicles from Chrysler, um, and they also had the Volkswagens too. But this stuff was where he originally did did his time on. Yeah, awesome. Mm. It'll mean a lot to him to have it driving again. He really would like to. That was one of the conditions: is that it says as long as I can drive it, as long as I'm allowed to drive it. I'm sure he can drive it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's really, really cool. cool. Yeah. It's a it's definitely a solid car. It's in good nick too. Yeah, it's solid. It's really heavy. There's a lot of steel in this car. Yeah. Do you know what it weighs? I don't know what it weighs. I reckon it'd be I don't know, maybe almost a couple of tons, but I'll, I'll, I'll honestly don't know. We'll have to find that out. We have a lot of specs to find out about the vehicle. Um, work out what the horsepower is. Um, the strength of the gearbox. Because I believe they came out in the V8 as well as the six cylinder. Um, so we'll have to make sure that when we spec the electric motor for this, that we, we don't overdo it. We want it to work to perform well, 
Yep. Um, and being a heavy car, it needs to have a, a bit of go to push it along. Um, but they're, yeah, they're all the specs. The information that we'll need to uh, make a decision when we go to convert it to electric. Yeah, great. Are you going to do any upgrades safety wise to it? Yeah, we've been talking about that. Um, I think having a disc brake front end will be helpful. Um, we looked at the steering column before, if there's a way of making a collapsing steering column, that would be possibly a, a nice safety feature. Um, and when you sit in the car, you're pretty close to that steering wheel too. Um, yeah. And it's a solid pipe, straight down through the firewall to the gear, to the steering box. Oh uh, yeah. Yep. Um, we'll probably improve the headlights, things like that. Um, yeah, nice. We'll still keep them original, but internally they'll be... Um, a better, a better light, like LED ones or something. Yeah. Or... yeah. It's actually this is probably six volt as well, so we'll have to convert to twelve volt. Twelve too. volt. Yeah. Yeah. So there might be a bit of wiring, just you know the general twelve volt wiring that we'll have to upgrade to as well. We'll have a look at that and see what the thickness of it is. They weren't as um, stingy on their wiring in the earlier days than they are today. We're going to have a look under this bonnet, but you've got something from the bonnet. I do. So. When Dad and his brother first found this car, the, uh, the head ornament was missing um, and they didn't really know where it was at the time. Uh, but somehow Dad found out that it was that it had been taken off here and bolted on some guy's old truck. So he got in contact with this guy and um, organised to get it back. And so, yeah, so originally, eventually we got, got the original oh, wow. that comes off this car. So, yeah, which is basically just going to sit in there like that. That's quite a... Good ornament. That's quite the ornament. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's where she's going to sit. Oh, that's awesome. So I hope we'll probably get it re-chromed and make it all nice again. Very so, cool. Fit it back onto the car. Yeah. So that was really cool. So it was a good little story that we actually got all the bits that originally came with the car. So you got everything, yeah? yeah? Right. Yep. I'm pretty sure everything is here. I love the window here. It's like an aircraft window. <laughs> The split screen. Split screen. It's all flat. Yeah. So in theory, it'd be easier to replace the windows. You just get them cut again or something. Or yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's the same with my old Beetle. So that because they've got a flat screen, you can actually get a, a sheet of glass cut and laminated, um, and then made to size, which you can't do on a curved screen. No. Not as easy. What's this bit? That's your um. That's your air conditioner. So if you leave lever the um, uh, lever inside in between the, the two seats, um, yeah, that, that lifts up, opens up, and lets air flow. Oh, lets air flow straight in. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's pretty stock standard on most on most old cars like that. Let's yeah. have a look All under right. the bonnet. Let's have a look under the bonnet. <laughs> been a while since this has opened. I take it's it. It's been a long while. So back in the late eighties. I actually got got this car going and took it for a drive. I uh, had to take the it's a flathead six of a side valve six cylinder. Um, so all the valves are in the block of the of the motor rather than in the head. So I had to take the head off and I get some valve seating paste and have to seat each valve back into the head, bolt it all back together again, and I took it for a drive around Sutherland's Creek out near Bannockburn, visited me now. Um, with dad's mate's house and had a bit of fun and the brakes weren't that great <laughs> but it was good fun it was a nice car nice to drive just a big it just floated it was like floating on air yeah right and yeah, cruising down the road yeah there you go yeah it's still good well, the engine oil's probably clear again by now it's all settled out yeah, yeah it's pretty good so these cars were Stamped in America, but they are assembled in um, South Australia. So okay. it's Chrysler Australia Limited, uh, Keswick, South Australia, Australian oh, vehicle right. number. It was a fancy one. This it actually had electric windscreen wipers. I was going to say, what? Yeah, um, that's, that's the windscreen wiper motor. motor there, yeah. The um, the forty nine Chev Dad's got is um, has got vacuum windscreen wipers. <laughs> so they're, they're quite. They're not smooth. They sort of build up a bit of vacuum and then fling across and then build up yeah. the vacuum and sort of come back. When we start doing the uh, conversion, what do you see up the front here? Will, will we see the motor or will this be a battery spot? Um, well, okay, we'll have to discuss it. There's a massive amount of room in here 
put batteries. Yeah. Um, we need to make it look authentic, but the reality is it will be electric car, so um, I think it's it's okay to design a battery box um, and all your, all your inverter and bits and pieces, the controller and that for it too. All right. Excellent. Look forward to seeing the next step. What is the next step? Um, make room, set the workshop up, and we'll probably, once we've got the vehicle out of storage here and into the proper part of the workshop, uh, we'll clean it up as much as good as we can and just really assess what needs to be attended to interior-wise as well as mechanically. Um, then remove the ice motor. Yep, that'll all come out. Um, Fuel tank. Source system. All the unneeded pieces yeah. can come out. Um, sit them aside. I don't think we'll get rid of them at this stage. Um, and when we do the conversion, it'll be reversible as well. So that if, not that I imagine it would ever happen, but if, if someone chose to, it could be reversed back to its original state. Yeah, that's nice. Um, just for authenticity rather than any real likelihood that it will get converted back to petrol. But. Um, it would be nice to have that. Yeah, option. that's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can't wait to start seeing this converted to electric. This will be fantastic. It's going to be one awesome ride. <laughs> yeah. The conversion and then the driving. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Martin. Thank you.